Hey guys, Vikas over here and you are watching We Are Genius. Guys, today again I am with a new video around ESP8266. In this video, we will see how to make a web based logger for DPS5015 variable power supply module. Many times while working around different devices, it is often required to observe the power consumption of the device over time and you are certainly not going to be interested in noting down the voltage current power over time but there are like devices or tools available that let you do so and they comes with logging and all but the, those are not that cheap so this project will help you in doing so with a lower cost and with a web based like interface as well as database backup the dps5015 does come with a software or even android f if you are going for the communication module one and that comes with a like bluetooth add-on but you can't integrate or extract that out of it and integrate with other applications which is quite essential for me to integrate with my home automation system moreover they are not cloud based so you can't uh, like have the data in your server and all but this project will let you do so so let's see how to do it and for this i'm going to use a wemos module and the server side i'm going to use php with mysql and the ui will be designed using bootstrap and i'll be using javascript with that to fetch data and show in the ui and all make sure if you want to deploy this app in your server you are having apache as well as mysql and php support so being said that let's get started guys so guys this is the dps5015 power supply module that I have got from Bangor. It comes with a power supply circuitry over here and a control circuitry. And the control circuitry includes one LCD that shows the basic parameters like the output voltage, input voltage, output current and the state. And it also shows some presets so that you can easily navigate between. Along with that it has a knob that you can like use to control the voltage as well as current and different buttons to navigate throughout the menu and like control like set parameters specific for this device now this actually i have housed inside a general purpose enclosure and over here i have got four output ports to connect into other devices now talking about the module it comes with uh, like these specifications you can see over here like input voltage from 6 to 60 volt it can take and the output voltage and current varies between 0 to 50 volt and 0 to 15 amps so that can be set by using this control circuitry over here so this module that i have got over here does come with a communication interface which you can check over here uh, this one it is a simple UART interface that you can connect to like pc or any microcontroller to communicate with the supply module so the communication protocol that it comes with is modbus so like it is a kind of industrial protocol uh, like used in scada systems for industrial automation so if you want to know in detail like what is modbus is all about you can check uh, like i'll just attach one article around it to so that you can like learn about it so that's pretty much i've got one input socket and all that over here so this uart uh, like port over here has got a VCC output also. Again, I have not checked the output voltage, but if it is around 3.3 or 5 volt, we will not be requiring any external power supply to the EMOS module that we will be using to log the data to the server. And in the server side, we will be using PHP with MySQL so that we can log periodic data from this device to monitor and all. Along with that, like EMOS, I am going to use this button and the LED the LED will simply show the status like if it is active or what and the button uh, is a simple on off button that I will be using to like enable the logging or disable it. So over here talking about the Modbus protocol that we will be using to communicate with the module uh, is like this you can see over here the Modbus works on different registers so again I will not get into detail on that but there are different registers available in the device to fetch particular parameter so we will be fetching out the v out i out power the v in and the like 
switch output state if you want or like if it is on or off and you can see over here this is mentioned at only read so you can only read from these registers that we are going to fetch out so i'll just quickly connect this uh, like module along with this uh, like button and the led and i will get into coding So guys, over here I have connected everything, the logging enable button, the on off switch actually, the LED and the communication interface to the EMOS module. But regarding the supply, I have got an issue over here, the 3.3 volt out of the power supply module is not able to drive this EMOS module over here. It is like, I don't know, for some reason the display is going blank and the Yes, P266 or the Vimos module is not powering up. So for that, we need to like use one buck converter or like uh, some sort of voltage regulator IC from this input section of the power supply module. So I'll do that, but for the time being, let's get into coding. So as uh, this is the Arduino sketch that I have used with the Vimos module to fetch data out of the DPS5015 power supply using Modbus over UART. Then it sends out the data using like HTTP GET calls. So we'll get into that, but first of all, let's go through the libraries that I have used for it. The first one is the Modbus RTU and over here, let me just open it up. This one, this is the Modbus Master Slave for Arduino by Samuel. So you can just go ahead and just download it and add it to your Arduino IDE to use it. And this enables you to make Arduino as a Modbus Master as well as Modbus Client that depends upon your project. Over here, we have used it in Modbus Master mode. So apart from the Modbus R2 library, I have used this software serial library because I didn't want to use the hardware serial port that is available on the Wemos because I just wanted to use it for debug. And this software serial library for ESP266 that you can download from, let, let me open it up. Yeah, this is by Peter Leroux and this one ESP software serial. So this works pretty well at lower baud rate, which is again 9600, which I'm using to interact with the TSP5015 module. So you can pretty much download this couple of libraries and add it to your Arduino IDE. Apart from that, I have used this software, sorry, ESP26 Wi-Fi and that is ESP26 Wi-Fi client that is comes with the like ESP266 SDK for Arduino. So when whenever you are like adding support for ESP266, it comes by default. So don't need to worry about that. And over here, I have defined different pins that I am using for like interacting with the DPS module as well as the switch and the LED that I have connected to the Wemos. So I have defined output LED, input switch, RX pin, and TX pin. So this rx and tx pins are used for the software serial library whereas 4 and 5 are for input and output then i have defined the border at 9600 so that is the default border that dps 5015 module supports or comes with pre-programmed now after that i have just defined some wi-fi constants on all then this is the au16 tata so this is the array that will contain the fetch data out of the like DPS module. So I have just taken a 16 byte array and you need to define the size depending upon how much uh, data you want to read out of the device. So that again depends uh, the number of registers you want to read and all. So for that, let me just open it up this particular file. 
second. Yep, this is the communication protocol that DPS 5015 module, and it can go through different registers or the modbus registers available in the module so that it can read and write. And as I said earlier, over here I'm just going to read the different register rather than writing. So if you want complete control and you want to manage the device from the web interface, you can implement the write functions also. That is pretty easy with the Modbus library that I have used. But that is not my requirement, so I have not used that. Now after that, UH state, it just uh, lets you like wait and toggle between different Modbus like read and write, read operations, you can say. So if you want to wait for certain time and all uh, between consecutive reads and all that this uh, like used as a flag to uh, like switch between different cases and all so we'll get into that then modbus master zero this defines it as a modbus master if you are passing zero so if you are pressing other than zero it uh, may be used as a modbus client at particular address now this is a modbus object that is telegram and all then you have to wait it defines like uh, the wait time and all you can check over here this then after that i have defined the software serial object and that is with rx and txpin that we defined earlier so after that just set up wi-fi that connects to a open network and all so that's uh, pretty much same with other codes so you can check that out that's it now in the setup i have used uh, like master.begin my serial 9600 so this is a serial object and the baud rate that we will be working with now master the set timeout 2000 sets the timeout for modbus pull so if you're like over here we must acting as a master device will pull data like with certain interval from the dps module so if it is not responding between this time like two seconds it, it is so this will uh, like trigger get out of the loop actually it will not wait for the data after that now the pretty variables and all then it's calling set of wi-fi to like setting up the wi-fi and all now after that let's get into the loop so i have over here having a session variable that takes the current millis so over uh, like with this session variable the OEMOS logs the data to the server so each time you press the button then the session variable change and accordingly the session in the server should change now after that we are just reading the input switch and if it is pressed means if it is in on state and the particular pin actually if it is on it will be connected to ground and this will come true so as long as this uh, pin is uh, like hold held high sorry so as long as this pin is held low this loop will continue now over here it will just switch through UH state so first of all it should be zero so it will wait for a particular time now when it becomes one or after the timeout it gets into this particular case so over here it just sends out that like particular parameters to pull from the dps module so over here we are just having a modbus read command that is with slave address one that is the default address of dps module then the function code function code is with respect to the registers we want to read so over here we are reading out b out i out power b in and on off state so all these registers have uh, like function code of three so if you want to read other registers like function code two and six are available you need to modify the code accordingly now you use 16 register address so that is the start slave address and over here i wish two because i want to read up like b out afterwards so i have set the start address at two now the number of registers you want to read so over here i want to read eight registers because i want to read from v out up to on off so this comes to eight registers now after that the master.query sends out the like particular packet out of the serial bus to the device now after uh, it does that it increments the eight state so now the like uh, switch flow eight state becomes two so it comes over here so it calls the master dot pull 
so it waits for incoming message and it waits till like this uh, whatever to find set timeout so within that time if it is not getting data it will just it will just exit otherwise it just reads out the data now master dot dot get state com idle means the data has been received and all now the bus is idle now if it is the case that it comes over here and we are making wait state zero again so it's, it will continue with the wait state and all after that we are adding a thousand millisecond delay to ether to wait so as to have the next poll after one second now we are checking if wi-fi is connected and we are just making http client and we are making a string over here with all those parameters that we have read from the device itself like the session that we created over here then the input voltage output voltage output current output power and the on off state and that is being read from this au16 data array that we defined earlier so this this arrays are like updated with this master dot pool over here you can see over here this pointer we have passed with the register and all now after that we are just beginning a http connection with this publish value or the string particular string with the get parameters and i am over here having an http api at my server address then a folder then this save data dot php file so this actually send out the data to this particular api endpoint with this get parameters you can see over here now if uh, it just waits for the http code and all now if the http code is higher than zero and it equals to 200 means it has successfully sent the data we are pulling the led high now this is a simple debug statement to print out the payload out of the server so if uh, like debug is not defined it will not execute then we are just closing the connection now if uh, we are not having a wifi connection the setup will, will get triggered and it will try to connect to wifi now after that i am just printing out this uh, again a debug statement like we are printing out this au16 data so if you are having any wrong value and all you can simply print out the data bytes and check for yourself which array position corresponds to what value so you need to check from the display of the module as well as the value you are getting out of the dps module through the uart port so you can check like one to one and define the position over here to make sure you are getting the right value the after that after this we are just making the output led low so this uh, over here like led high and LED low will just have an uh, heartbeat effect and all so it will blink and it will uh, let us know that the code is running and it is having a successful connection to the server now that's all happening with the code uh, now let's see in the server side what i've done yep over here so i have this uh, save data.php that we are calling from the arduino module and it is a simple php script again you need to have apache and php installed in your server to make this execute so this takes out different uh, like get parameters that we are sending from the arduino and it is just going to like insert into the database and for that again you need to have mysql installed so we are just inserting into a database and all those values with, with the session id and current timestamp so i'll give the link down below for the sql script they need to like use for setting it up so that's pretty much uh, this is a basic script nothing like no complex thing happening and all it'll just get the data and it will just insert into the database now after that i have used another okay over here dbconnector.php i am using to like provide the database credentials and it holds the database functions and all so make sure to change if you are using different credentials over here 
like with the mysql command like localhost goes for the host address of your mysql database and it, mostly it is localhost then the username the password and the database that you are using to store the values and all so make sure to change this if you are going to use this and all otherwise you can just tweak the code as for your requirement now after this i have just defined this raw data.php file that gives out the data as per our requirement so that uh, to like uh, like show in a gui or something so i have uh, like four functions first is uh, it will just uh, like return the latest value that we'll be using to show the real time value of the like from the module then second is uh, like it takes a parameter in the query itself and if uh, like you want to particularly check the data for the particular day you can just provide the day uh, like time information and all and it will sh just pop you the data and all. it will just return you the data now third is if you want to like uh, see the data for a particular session it gives out that particular data then uh, if you are just curious or you want to view the latest session data that you are running uh, it will be uh, like e code uh, with the type code 4 now this is just simple we are just creating a json array so as to have all those data now this is the script you can go through it pretty much and it kind of works so that's with this php script now coming to the ui this is i am using html with javascript and i'll not get into this you can pretty much check it out now let's open up the web ui and we'll see how it looks so this is the ui see over here let me refresh it yep you can see over here so this is the input voltage that we are pulling out of the supply module the current instantaneous output power and the output voltage as well as the current over here it shows the latest update time and you can see over here it is shown in real time so each and every two seconds it pulls the data and post to the server that is being updated over here now this is the current session id and the smps output state right now if it is showing one means the smps is on and this is a reserve field that i'm not using over here it is showing the output power and i am showing the output voltage and current and this uh, like graphs are for the current session only now if you want you can implement other things like if you want to uh, like see the values for a particular day and all you can implement from this raw data I'm, you can get all those informations that you want to display in graph so you just need to tweak a bit in the index.html file and you are ready to go so let's see if i'll change uh, like bolt uh, like the output voltage and all if these values are getting changed So guys, that's all with this. I hope you have enjoyed it. And if so, hit the thumbs up button. And if you have not subscribed to our channel yet, consider subscribing it for videos like this. So see you next time with our next video. Till then, goodbye.